Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life on this July 14th. I'm Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us today. Courtney does have the day off today, but do not worry. We're going to have so much fun on today's show. We have a very special guest joining us. She just hit her one-year mark living in Houston. She's an avid fan of the outdoors, an accomplished athlete, a dog mom, a wine lover, and recently engaged to the love of her life. Any guesses? Please welcome Channel 2's Christine Noel. Come on out. Oh, oh. oh we're doing a little fishing. Oh, I'm going to reel you in. Oh, are you reeling okay, me so in? I'm fish. reeling you I'll in. I'll be the fish. <laughs> Come on in. Oh, I'm man. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to, to have you here, and we're six feet apart. I mean, I haven't hugged you in I don't know how many months. Far too long. It's kind of a strange time, right, to I say know. the least. I know. <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. And during the pandemic, Christine, you've been working so hard. You finally took some time off last week. Finally had a week off, and it's my favorite week of the year, 4th of July. My birthday falls uh, over the 4th, and so does my grandfather's birthday. So it's always a special time for my family. But, yeah, I think that everyone could use a little time off right about now if they haven't taken a little, a little breather. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to do that. And I understand that ever since you were a kid, because you and your grandfather celebrate your birthdays so close together, you actually have never celebrated your birthdays Apart. apart, yeah. So my birthday is July 8th. His is the 6th. And it's been this really special thing we've done every year. This is my very first birthday. Oh, my goodness. I know I was a very large child. Uh, that You're was my first birthday. You only a year birthday. old? <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. Huge. I thought you were a kindergartner in that <laughs> know, photo. At least, at least like one going on five. Um, and then every year after that, we, we celebrated. And we didn't always live in the same state even. And he would always travel um, to celebrate with me. And then this year obviously looked a little bit different. And we did the social distancing thing where he and my grandmother pulled up in their SUV. Um, and I'm holding a sign that says 34 years together. We've never missed Aww. a birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Grandpa. And it was it was really emotional for me. Um, yeah. I just kind of jumped in real fast and, and held up the sign and then ran out. But uh, yeah, it was really emotional because I can think a, a lot of people can relate to trying to celebrate a loved one during this time or celebrating a birthday and not having it be exactly what you think it should be or what it's right. been in the past. But it really was super emotional for me to still be able to celebrate with him even though it looked a little bit different so yeah bittersweet to yeah. not be able to just run up and, throw and just your embrace them yeah but we still it, it still meant a lot to both of us I'm glad you were able to go Thank home and you. do that and yeah. I think it is you know we both celebrated birthdays during COVID my sister just had one my mom had her birthday during COVID and I guess I always try to look on the bright side and think okay everyone is healthy and everyone is safe and staying apart is what's gonna get us through yeah this. counting our blessings for sure right Right now I mean I'm just so grateful that my grandfather's in his late 80s and that we still can I can still see him on his birthday so every year I'm like that is the best birthday gift I can get yeah absolutely yeah. you also look pretty tan <laughs> so so what <sighs> did you do on vacation a lot yeah, of time so at the I'm, lake I'm from West Michigan originally I grew up right on Lake Michigan and a lot of boating the, the lake was actually warmer than it usually is this time of year. You think Lake Michigan and it's freezing. It yeah. usually is. But yeah, a lot of time out on the uh, social distancing on the water, that's the best sort of sort of uh, social distancing you can have. But saw some family um, and yeah, just spent a lot of time outside and slept in, had coffee on the on the water. It was it was really relaxing. Some time to rest and recharge. Yeah, you're looking a little tan there too, my friend. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> it's Guerlain Bronzer, number four. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to make a note of that. I think I've asked that in the past. I'm like, how do you look so tan? No, we do. Uh, so ever since the beginning, we, we we do have a couple of friends who have been quarantining as well. And, you know, they're doing the same yeah. thing. Like, they're mostly at home all the time. So we have done a couple socially distant backyard pool sessions. And it has been so nice just to sort of sit in the water and soak up the sun. And especially the last few days, yeah. it's been so bloody hot here and humid that it's tough to beat the heat. Last August, when we were together right here on the same set, I'm pretty sure we were trying to figure out ways to be really cool while airing out certain parts of your body that might be sweating That's a little. True. Remember, we were doing our little model poses. <laughs> we we're like, it's just so hot. We just 
<laughs> he did like the subtle pit air out. So, okay, you came here from Denver, Colorado. I lived yes. in Colorado for a hot second when I was in fifth grade. Radically different landscape, yeah. radically different climate. And I just hit my four-year mark here in Houston. You just hit your one-year mark. Yeah. Have you sort of gotten into the rhythm and gotten used to, I mean, we were talking about the weather. Have you gotten used to the heat and humidity yet? Or does it still sort of knock you over when you? It was in the 90s and humid in West Michigan when I went home. And everyone was like, man, it's so hot. And I'm like, really? I think this feels pretty nice. I think that you sort of, I don't think you ever get used to this heat, right? But you expect it. And then you just kind of figure out how to deal with it. My hair still is awful, just like I explained, <laughs> complained last summer. Like, how do you do this? But, you know, you just figure it out. Some better than others, obviously. <laughs> but Your hair you know. is not awful. <laughs> it is not awful. But d does it you take a long I mean. time to sort of get it? in place to do what you want? Well, it's not in place right now. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> like, you know what, what? like, what's this doing? I think it looks great. Anyway, it we looks can move great. on from that. But yes, I feel like, you know, you sort of get used to just kind of sweating all the time. I have a friend, Colleen, who, who was offered a job in Houston, and she didn't take the job because she thought it would destroy her hair. Well, it's a true story. Yeah, but like, if everyone can have skin like Mr. Shore here, it's just like glowing. Girl on bronzer number four. <laughs> no, it's you too can have it. Go to the Nordstrom counter. That and tell the them humidity, I sent you. You know? So what have you learned about yourself during the pandemic? Because when this started in March, very few people, I mean, maybe the psychics of the world right. uh, knew what was about to come. But here we are in July. Numbers are getting worse, right? People are like fighting about masks in the grocery store and freaking out on each other. We've seen the best and the worst of people come out, right? But while yeah. you've been spending extra time at home with your dog, Bella, your fiance, Jesse, yeah. is there anything that you've learned about yourself? I am absolutely terrible at puzzles. Oh, I have learned no. that they actually give me a little bit of anxiety. Jesse's so good at that. He's one of those like analytical minds, good with numbers. And I sit there with all these pieces and I'm like, I gotta go. I, I, <laughs> this, this to me, just, oh, okay, and this is not relaxing. And a lot, I know puzzles were like the hot thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're still like on back order till like September trying to get puzzles right now. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like I never knew that until that was like the one thing that you could do once you've watched Tiger King and everything else on Netflix. You but know? if the puzzle takes hours, like ours have, I understand that feeling. I like to see progress. You know, if you can find a, a piece here and there and continue <laughs> moving forward, then it's like, okay, we got this, we're moving forward. But if it takes an, a full hour and you've only gotten two pieces, that's, that's rough. I just feel like I realize with puzzles how much I actually fail putting one piece into the other. I'm like, this looks like it should fit. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't fit. Anyway, that's just one small thing. I also love cooking. I found that I actually am not horrible at it. No. I've been cooking a lot more, a lot of homemade pizzas. Oh, right. Pizzas. Love pizza. Yeah. Jesse's yeah. lucky. Does Jesse cook as well? He no. can cook, but I'm like, I got this. I got this. So I've been just trying more recipes. I mean, I can only sit in front of the TV for so long. I try to unplug as much as I can when I'm at home. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of pizzas, a lot of spending time with Bella. Yeah. What about you? Jesse's a sweetheart. We've, I mean, we sit on the couch at home, which I don't think we had done until March. Yeah. We had this couch that never got used. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. we're not the type to typically go home and just sit and down. Because we were always out doing things in the community. So for us, this has been a real reset. And the remarkable thing is, there are times when maybe Brandon will get a little bit quiet and and I feel like maybe he's getting a, a bit stir crazy because he's been working from home. So he's home all day. Yes. And then I come home and I don't know, like he's never even raised his voice at me once. We don't, we don't. We well, don't Brandon, fight. Brandon, we put Brandon on a very high pedestal around here. Brandon, love you, love him, love you both. But seriously, I know he's like so chill and like the most gentle human being. I know, uh, he's so, so, oh my gosh, this was the day we throwback. first met. Yes. The day we first met, so, gosh, when was that? <laughs> two years two, ago? Two years ago this month, yeah, this is when I came to interview here at KPRC, and Jerry Martin, our GM, said, hey, Derek, why don't you and Brandon take Christine out for dinner? Well, <laughs> that lasted about seven hours, right? That was the longest dinner on record of my lifetime. It was the longest dinner I have ever had, ever. And the, the sweet people at Emmeline yes. love Emmeline yes. there, and uh, they didn't kick us out. <laughs> Remarkably. <laughs> Remarkably. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, she's so cool. I hope we can convince her to move to Houston. And then eventually, six months later, you did. Poof. There it was. 
Here I know. I feel like whenever we're together, though, and we're out in public, I'm like, I feel like it's remarkable that we that anyone lets us stay that long. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, no, these drunks again. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. It has been nice, though, to have you on Houston Life. And we've done a number of things out in the community together. Uh, yeah. This was downtown at Discovery Green. And it's really interesting. They say that when you meet, you know, your partner in life, your friends in life, I can think back definitively to so many different friendships. And it's like, you know the moment you meet someone that you're meant to be yes. in each other's lives. Are you saying you feel that way about I'm me? I'm saying I feel Are that way about you. Yeah, like when I met you, I felt like I had known you my entire life. I know. And that's we, a rare thing. We, we connected right away. Right away. I was like, oh my gosh, these, these people, like I need these people in my circle. It was so good. It was like, it was like love at first sight. Yeah. It and was now he can't quit me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, and Jesse, your fiance, I love him so much. We, uh, oh, wow. These are some this. of our engagement photos that we, that we took in, in Telluride, Colorado, uh, not right before COVID hit, uh, like the weekend before everything started shutting down. That's right. Yeah, he's, he's such a sweetheart. So we're working on planning a, a wedding for next March. We'll see how that goes. I mean, I know there's a lot of folks at home that have either had to cancel a wedding or cancel a, a big family event. Uh, I feel you. It's so it's so hard or trying to cancel plan a trip to the Tokyo Olympics because you would be leaving like, like right now, like like to tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, and you're not. yeah, I know. And they, they push that back a, a full year, obviously. So, yeah, I just I, I just hope that it all happens. I. I I was bummed out, like so many of you, that the Olympics weren't taking place. But yeah. I mean, this is in which the life we live. These are the days of our lives right now, for for real. No, that shows at two o'clock. I know, but these are the days. Oh, of our oh lives. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry, dad jokes, endless dad jokes here on Houston Life. That's um, why you and Jesse get along. <laughs> well, I remember before Jesse proposed to you, he had pulled me aside. We were actually at our friend Natalia's house, and they had just moved in, so they didn't have furniture. And we were, like, spinning around on the floor. Do you remember that night? Yes. So Jesse pulls me aside, and he's like, bro, uh, pss, 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 come over here. And he's showing me pictures of the ring, because the ring that you're wearing was actually his grandmother's. His grandmother's, yeah, his grandmother's ring. And she is still alive and well and she and she blessed the ring to us and how meaningful right I mean I get emotional whenever whenever I think about it um, it's, it's a beautiful thank ring. you thank you but it means so much more that she that she wanted us to have that and saw saw our love and our friendship and the mutual respect that we have and and to say yes yeah. I'm willing to take this off my finger and bless it to my grandson to to give to me so yeah it was just a really a really emotional thing that I won't keep going on about. <laughs> it was sweet. It was sweet. And I cannot wait uh, to meet her at the wedding. I am still invited, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Depends on how today's show goes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think we have a game, right? Are we supposed to have some arrows oh, somewhere? Okay. I don't see I don't any know. arrows around here. Um, but, oh, I think Ray, <laughs> our stage manager, has them. Ray, wake up. <laughs> I'm kidding. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> He's so tired. Thank you. Oh, so I know. This heat. This, our show is his nap time. You know? He's like, oh, this it's show warm. again. It's warm. You just want to, you know. Okay. okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to talk about who is most likely to do something. So if you saw yesterday's show with Brandon, we sort of uh, played a game about... <laughs> about that bow tie? On I, he looks great in a bow tie. I look like a clown <laughs> in a bow tie, a scary clown at that, but he looks very sharp in one. So it's who's most likely to, and essentially because we've known each other for an entire lifetime. We only met a year ago, but we've known each other <laughs> Two years forever. Ago. Um, we're going to have graphics uh, okay. put up on the screen, a question, and then don't even think about it, but you immediately have to either choose yourself or you okay. choose me. Okay. Okay, let's All go right. with the first one. Mm. Here we go. To get a parking ticket. Oh, I think probably you. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because I lived in L.A. forever, and there would be like nine parking. So I would sit and I would study when I would park. I'm very careful about oh, the parking situation. Oh, see, I would not be like, that sign came out of nowhere. <laughs> that, officer, I That was that not sign there was, when I parked here. You know, they don't make it easy in Houston either. Those kiosks with no. all the buttons, there's like 200 buttons, a full alphabet and everything. I'm not very patient when it comes to that kind of stuff. Okay. okay so next, I'll hold that one. Yeah. Next question. Okay. You are a patient person in general. Appear on a reality show. Oh, you for sure. No, you could. How many? How many Ironmans have you run? I did a half Ironman. 
But you've done like done marathons. A lot of, tri a lot of tri triathlons. Triathlons. Yeah. Yeah, so I could see you on like an athletic reality competition oh, show. Oh, see, I thought maybe you were like, you're a hot mess. You deserve to be on like a real housewives of something. Is that why you're pointing at me? I because meant, I'm I a meant, hot mess? I meant to point. What kind of show would I be on? <laughs> I don't know. Come on. A cooking show, one of those tattoo competitions. <laughs> Yeah, that's like St strange addictions. Oh yeah, I'd be the girl drinking like air freshener, ten cans a day. Have you seen that one? Strange addiction. No. She sprays air freshener. Look it up right now on YouTube. Strange addiction air freshener. This girl eats air freshener. That is not. And there's one. Scary. She eats her cat hair. Her cat's hair. She pulls it out, balls it up, and literally she likes. Oh stop! She likes the texture on her little teeth. That is disgusting. Well, that's not the show I'm gonna be on. <laughs> okay, oh next God. question. To burn dinner, oh, yeah, I would be most likely to do that. Pre-COVID, I would say, post-COVID. Yeah, I would, be, <laughs> in fact, haven't I burned dinner at my, every time you come over to my no, house. No, Brandon always cooks, well, and it's like, literally, he deserves his own cooking show. I know, he would be, he would be great at that. <laughs> so I do make some great chocolate chip cookies, though, and I don't burn them. Except when I forget to set the timer, <laughs> which happens half the time. Like, it smells delicious. <laughs> oh, wait, what's the alarm going off? Wait, were you at her house the night the smoke alarm was going? This has happened so many times. The smoke alarm goes off while we're cooking, cooking dinner. No, I was there when it was a delicious dinner and you made the cookies and they didn't burn. Oh, okay, that's right. And we had that, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. that peanut butter whiskey and somehow I disappeared and I was never to be seen <laughs> We're again. like, man, that was delicious. Now, where's Derek? He's like... <laughs> I was upstairs asleep. He just was gone. <laughs> okay, I think we have the last question. That was during the holidays, okay? I was stressed out. Who's most likely to get lost? It was like June. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was at Christmas. <laughs> it was at Christmas. Peanut butter whiskey in June. Ew. It's always delicious. That's nasty. Get lost. Listen, I'm going to say neither of us because I have a great sense oh, of direction. Who's oh. most likely to get lost? Oh, definitely me. Really? Oh, yeah. But all those trips to the mountains, you don't get lost. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Well, I, I didn't know this about you. Our last question, let's put it up on the screen there. Be first on the dance floor. Probably you two. It takes me to... Oh, come on. What? I'm not a good dancer, but I, I like to move. <laughs> the producers are telling us to dance. Did you hear that note? Like okay. a sit dance? You, you want to you see some sprinkler action? I think we can we can hook up the sprinkler. First, I gotta mow that lawn though before the sprinklers <laughs> come on. Okay, the lawn is mowed. That's right. Ooh, that's a solid sprinkler. Okay, what do you call that move? Oh, this is the one that Jesse likes to do. I don't know what it is, but is he putting on gloves? <laughs> it's the hand model. Like <laughs> it's the hand model. This is the Paul Mollis move. <laughs> It softens hands while you do dishes. <laughs> we can be great. We can be great spokespeople, like Paul Mollet, right? I would be tripping. I'd be. Oh, that's a good one. What else you got? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the oh, the grocery cart is a good one too. Like oh, where you go oh, yeah. shopping and it's like, not buying those black beans anymore. Oh, the market mm. strawberry. Nope, that brand's not for me. Definitely three popcorn. <laughs> Yes. At least. You know, we're going to have such a good time on today's show. And if this was not weird enough for you, don't worry. It's about to get even weirder. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But today, you know, is National Mac and Cheese Day. Yeah. And Lauren Kelly is going to share a super simple recipe for bacon mac and cheese bites. Delicious. But first, can't make it to the salon. Not to worry. We've called an expert help for you. Celebrity hairstylist Joseph Maine will share quick and easy styles that you can recreate at home for your next Zoom call. How about that? Plus tips to make your cut and color last longer. I am out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming up next on Houston Live. <laughs> yes, surprise. to hair. Houston's heat and humidity can be a recipe for disaster, right? And if you haven't been able to visit a salon during the pandemic, how do you make your cut and color last longer? Ooh, this is a very good question. Celebrity stylist Joseph Maine has worked with celebs like Katie Holmes, Sophia Bush, Kate McKinnon, and he's joining us now with easy styling tips and advice to help us stay looking fresh between salon visits. Joseph, it's great to see you and your bright smile. Wish you were in studio, uh, but Zoom will do just fine. And let's start the conversation with shampoo, this is something that I didn't realize actually 
made a difference. I thought it was all marketing, right? I always buy the cheap drugstore stuff, but you say the right shampoo can make all the difference. It really can make all the difference. I think it's something that we often overlook and we really buy into these false promises. A lot of shampoo companies will tell you that it's doing a number of things for you when really you just want your shampoo to clean your hair. If it tells you that it's moisturizing or it's repairing or it's volumizing, it's likely leaving things behind on your hair. These things can impede healthy hair growth um, and even dull your hair color. So you wanna make sure that you're using a really crystal clear shampoo because if you're not, your hair's never getting clean if your shampoo's leaving things behind on your hair because then you're adding a conditioner and styling products then going back with that shampoo that's leaving things behind. So you wanna make sure your shampoo is really cleaning out all of the products, all the conditioners, everything. So you have a healthy scalp, so you have bright hair color, and so that your hair color when you go to the salon has a clean base to stick to. So um, if that's a concern of yours, the shampoo that I would recommend is the Color Wow Color Security Shampoo. This is a dream clean. It's just a really nice gentle cleanser. It's sulfate free, so it's gonna be great for those people, especially in Houston. I know a number of people get Brazilian blowouts or keratin treatments to repel the humidity. This is gonna be perfect for you. If you color treat your hair, it's ideal. So but you really want to look for a shampoo that is crystal clear because if it has a lot of the pearly, iridescent kind of look to it, it, it certainly has those additives that we want to avoid. I've heard such good things about that too. Yeah, it's interesting to know like a clear, that's a that's a great rule yeah. of thumb. Yeah, certainly. And yeah. Joseph, I know that between the Saharan dust we were dealing with last week, the sun, the humidity, let's talk about some treatments that we can use to help protect our hair right now. So I, there's a number of treatments that you can use and I'm gonna just kind of go from high to low. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is Olaplex. So this is a bond building treatment. I don't know if you guys can see that, so Olaplex. Um, it's a bond building treatment. So this is something you wanna put in your hair before you shampoo it. It's actually gonna help strengthen your hair. Um, I think that retails for about $34, so it's a little on the pricier side. A little goes a long way, though, and that's going to really strengthen your hair if you're experiencing any damage. Then I have these guys, which are a little better of a value, which these are the Color Wow cocktails. So again, if you have hair that, that you've colored or is lacking moisture, if it's become fine and limp from over-processing or you're experiencing breakage, there's a different cocktail for you. So these are leave-in treatments. It's something really easy to use. You just put it through your hair after you've shampooed your hair. Um, you leave it in and wet hair and then blow dry it throughout. And that's gonna give you a really nice finish, something that you can use again and again. The more you use it, the better your hair is gonna feel. And then finally, there's a number of DIY ingredients that we have at home that make great hair masks. So some of the ingredients I like to use are bananas, avocados, eggs, olive oil, coconut oil, um, and a few other things that you have right in your kitchen that mixing different variations of any of those things are gonna make really great masks. Um, but because those are some natural ingredients, you do want to shampoo them out. They're not something that you wanna leave in. So mix up your mask, leave it on for a good 10 minutes, and then shampoo and condition. It's not, it's not gonna be your third step, it's gonna be your first. And I'll often put those specific ingredient lists on my Instagram, but you really can't go wrong with any of those. Joseph, I'm so glad you said this because I came home once and my mom had rubbed like egg and avocado in her hair. I thought she had lost her mind. She looked like a monster. Anyway, apparently it works, it Joseph. Works. Okay, so let's talk about grown out roots. And this Ooh. has been a massive issue for so many people, right? You can't go to the salon, right? And some people are afraid of trying to color it themselves at home. So what do you do if you have this giant one, two, three inch root shelf on your scalp? So I'm gonna really advise you to not color your hair yourself. And it's not because the application can go wrong, but it's because the drugstore brand hair colors are filled with ingredients that layer up on your hair. Well, they have metallics in them and a number of other things that are kind of a one size fits all to make sure they work for everyone. So they can really layer on your hair, make your hair texture terrible, and they can make it really difficult and expensive for your hair colors to get your hair color back to where you want it. So using one of these things I'm gonna show you is gonna be really helpful. It's crazy because these things are flying off the shelf and they kind of of, um, they've been selling out everywhere, but the first one is the Color Wild Root Cover Up. Some of you may have seen this. It's been an award winner for like six years or so, um, but it's a mineral-based powder that you apply with a brush, water resistant, works great in the humidity in Houston, comes in a number of shades, and it blends effortlessly with your hair. Um, and then something else that I really like is the Batiste Dry Shampoo. They have some colored pigmented ones um, that actually work really well. They're a little harder to control than with a mineral-based powder and a brush. You just kind of spray this along your roots, but it's gonna perform double duty. So it's gonna be your dry shampoo and it's also gonna give you some color as well. So there's a lot of great options, but try not to color your hair if you can avoid it.
Mm, that's a I good know. tip. Don't go it alone, right? Oh, I was so close, and I was like, oh, this is not going to end well. <laughs> this is not going to end well. Joseph, we so appreciate the tips. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely the good on the, the roots, and yeah, <laughs> I like that. All right, Joseph, we'll be back later in today's show to share some easy styling tips for your next Zoom call. Yeah, Joseph, we'll see you in just a bit. And when we come back on Houston Life, it is Tip Tuesday. At what temperature range should you keep your home's thermostat set during the summertime in order to stay cool and and of course, save on those energy bills. We'll have the answer next. Welcome back. It is time now for our Tip Tuesday with one hour air conditioning and heating of Houston. Choosing a thermostat setting is largely a matter of personal preference, but you can get good energy savings and stay comfortable by setting your thermostat between, get this, 76 and 78 degrees. Say it with me, 76 and 78 degrees. This will provide for decent cooling in the summer months without sending your electricity bill soaring. If you'd like to learn more about how to save money while keeping your home comfortable, just log on to one hour Houston AC. Dot com. And uh, during today's show, some of our viewers have been sending in comments talking about the heat and the humidity in Houston. We've all had bad hair days, bad haircuts. And earlier we had posted that question, Christine, on our Houston Life Facebook page. We've been getting some submissions. I love it. I need to actually go back and see if I can find like an old school photo of all the terrible hairstyles I've had. But <laughs> let's see Tammy's. Tammy's saying hashtag mullet 1980. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love the, the party in the back. Business up front, party. Party in, in the, the back. back you can never yeah. go wrong Tammy, with the mullet. Thank you. <laughs> and Danny wrote in with uh, the infamous ball cut. Oh, Danny, yes. we love it. It looks Straight great. Right across, though. At least mom or dad got it right across. That's what, you, that's what you need, though. I always wanted a bowl cut. I thought they looked so cool. Listen, it's not too late. <laughs> Okay. Y YOLO. Yeah, yep, that's I mean, true. Br Brandon would never allow that. I would never ask for that. <laughs> I don't okay. know. We'll All right, me. let's see. Corey, Corey Lojo saying, hey, don't judge me. Get I it, think girl. that looks great. I know. I really like it. Fresh and flirty and fun. I know. Let it go. I love yeah, it. Straight out of bed. Let We're it not do judging its thing. You. Mm -mm. And this is our last one. Lisa, she was trying for the Olivia Newton-John at the end of Grease look. Instead, she ended up with the Daphne the Poodle. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, I think you look great, Lisa. You guys are the best for sharing these. And embarrassing photos, you know, we all have them, so do not worry. And keep them coming. Visit our Houston Life Facebook page to submit yours. I was talking about the bull cut straight across. Oh, yeah, when I was like two years old. Obviously, you saw that I looked like a seven-year-old when I was like two. My mom, she wanted, she was trying to save money, you know, and she, she cut, it was like, more like that. Oh, it no. It was more like a diagonal. And here I am just like, <laughs> and you, you loved it. I remember. I always smiled. I was just a really happy baby, but it was not a good look. That was, was like jet black hair. We need to see photos of this. I'll find it, yeah. When we were kids, we would go to the local Supercuts, and we could get free haircuts there because they needed models for stylists in training. So we would go to the Supercuts, and instead of going up front and getting our haircut, they would like take us to the back room like with no windows. <laughs> so no so one was it practice then? But you know, single mom, like yeah. we could not afford haircuts. And so it was a great way to save money and get a free haircut the number of times on our way home one or both of my sisters were like crying and scream she ruined it it'll never be the same it's, it's it can be devastating <laughs> it, can, it be can, devastating. can be devastating but it does grow back it always grows back and the good news is during COVID it's a great time to experiment <laughs> Try something just, new. Just stay home, try something, and then if it doesn't work out, you get plenty of time to, to work it out. Yeah, no one's going to see you anyway. <laughs> That's my tip. There we go. Tip Tuesday. Write it down. <laughs> Got it. All right, still ahead on today's show, hairstyling tips from, for Zoom calls. We know that so many of you folks are doing that right now. If you're working from home, these styles can be ready to go in just a few minutes. We'll check back in with celebrity hairstylist Joseph Maine for a lesson in quick hairstyle ideas. But first, Lauren Kelly is celebrating National Mac and Cheese Day by sharing a delicious and simple recipe for bacon mac and cheese bites. She'll show us how right after this. Well, welcome back. Today, we're celebrating a lot of things here on Houston Life. Christine, some bad dance moves. We're also celebrating National Mac and Cheese Day. Uh, delicious. <laughs> and whether your favorite way to eat it is straight from the microwave or a fancy lobster mac and cheese dish, yummo. Lauren Kelly is taking us inside of her kitchen for another simple, delicious recipe. Welcome to the LK 
Okay, the Lauren Kelly Kitchen, and today is July 14th, and that means it's National Mac and Cheese Day. Did you know that? Well, of course, it's one of my favorite foods, so we are celebrating National Mac and Cheese Day, and yes, it's one of your childhood favorites, but today, we've got a very special recipe for bacon mac and cheese bites that I am gonna share with you guys. It's really simple. The ingredients you will need today are pre-cooked bacon, a muffin pan, cooking spray, mac and cheese, of course, some breadcrumbs, and shredded cheese. So we're gonna go ahead and make the mac and cheese first, and we're gonna boil six cups of water to drop the noodles in. Make sure you take the cheese pouch out. Okay, next step will be just to grease your muffin pan. All right, next we're gonna grab our pre-cooked bacon and line each of these muffin pans with these bacon. So next we're gonna take an ice cream scooper and scoop out just a little bit of mac and cheese and put it inside the middle of these bacon strips. So next we're gonna sprinkle some breadcrumbs just on top of each of these little cups. We're gonna put it in the oven at 350 and bake for 15 minutes. Oh my goodness, it smells so good in my kitchen. That was the ding and that means it's ready. All right, you guys, that's it. Final step is to enjoy. <laughs> Mini! Shh. All right, that's it. The final last step is to enjoy. Have a very happy National Mac and Cheese Day. I'm gonna enjoy these right here. Those sound effects are that sounds, disgusting. It looks delicious. <laughs> sounds a little less so. Lauren Kelly, I love you, girl. Yeah, that was great. That really was great, but that sound effect, I can never need to hear that again. <laughs> okay, Lauren, that was fun. When we come back, are you ready to explore the great outdoors? Find out where you can save big on summer and winter sports gear. That's coming up next. Welcome back. Whether you're planning a summer camping trip or winter ski trip, you'll definitely need the right gear for your next adventure. Jimmy Boyle with Houston-based Sun and Ski Sports is joining us now to help us prepare. Jimmy, it is great to see you. Thank there. you, Derek. How are you doing? You know what? I'm doing well, bud. And uh, you guys really are sort of a one-stop shop. So break it down for us. I mean, because you guys have the equipment and the apparel, pretty much anything we would need to plan our next adventure. That's right. It's kind of funny. You know, we're based here out of Houston and uh, our main uh, category, if you will, is uh, ski and uh, winter sports. So ski, snowboard, equipment, apparel, footwear, you name it. And uh, then we have a, a huge summer business, which would be uh, cycling, running, active lifestyle, you know, board shorts, bikinis, you name it. And being prepared and having the right gear and equipment um, for our next trip, it's not just about improving the experience, right? Ensuring that we have fun. It's also about keeping us safe. Absolutely. We, uh, you know, we really push, you know, for safety in every category that we sell. Helmets in just about every action sport is a must. Um, and our, our guys and gals at the store definitely are, you know, full of advice on how to keep you safe out there. And Jimmy, what you just said I think is so important. You guys are staffed by, by experts, people who are out using this gear, right? And when a customer comes in, they want to be sure that they're buying the right gear that's not only appropriate for what they're about to do, but that will last a long time. That's right. Whether you're coming in and maybe dropping a lot of money on a, a bicycle or getting fitted for uh, ski boots, it's important to uh, have an expert fit you. You know, a bicycle is not a one-size-fits-all item. Uh, ski boots, if they're not fitted properly, that could really ruin your trip. So uh, that's why people come to see us from all around to uh, get the expert advice. Yeah, improperly fitted ski boots. It could ruin your trip, and also you might be feeling that uh, for, the, for the weeks and, and months to come. Let's talk about uh, your motto, hashtag adventure is for all. I love that we just saw some video of, uh, you know, some young children getting fitted in their boots and their gear. Yeah. I started taking my nieces skiing when they were three and four years old. So you believe that, that no one is too small, no adventure is too big. 
Absolutely not. You know, we have, uh, we're fitting kids, uh, whether they're coming in for a, a little 12 inch wheel bicycle or a little junior set of skis, getting fitted, you know, everybody's having fun all the way from the toddlers, all the way up to the grandparents. I got to ask you the million dollar question, Jimmy. Do you sure. actually have bicycles in stock? Because we made the huge error in February, January. We were thinking, you know, we should get another bike so we can ride through the neighborhood. And then COVID hit and bam, it was all sold out. That is a great question. Um, you know, bicycles have been flying off the shelf for the last several months. Everybody is uh, running thin on inventory. We do have a lot of bikes landing in our stores this week, uh, mountain bikes in particular. Uh, we have, we do have inventory right now, yes, but, uh, you know, a, a big shipment landing this week. So definitely ready to sell some more bikes. We mentioned quality. Some of the brands you sell, more than 50, uh, 350 of them, the North Face, Patagonia, Burton, Spider, GoPro, Yeti. I mean, when people come in, again, it's about buying the right gear that's going to, going to hold up. A lot of times people try to, you know, skimp and then they find that they've got to replace that gear more often. Yeah, the products that we sell are typically premium brands like the brands you just mentioned. Uh, you know, it, it's you you pay for what you get. You get quality uh, brand name gear that's going to hold up, that's going to provide the very best experience. And Jimmy, congratulations. I understand today is your 40th anniversary. That's really oh, cool. So I thought you were going to say it's my 40th birthday. <laughs> I'll take that all day long, Derek. <laughs> well, it is indeed. Simon Ski's 40th anniversary. You're darn right. Well, today is our birthday. You go. Your 40th birthday for the shop, right? 40th anniversary. We're seeing some info on our screen right now. The good news is not only are you celebrating this anniversary, but you're passing along savings uh, to our viewers today. Now through July 20th for the next week, people can save up to 50% off. And this is uh, not just in stores, but it's also on your website, sunandski.com. In store, online, we've got this sale going on. It's uh, a lot of great deals out there. As it says on your screen, 50% off in some cases. Um, yeah, definitely want to uh, take advantage of that sale. And you and I were chatting during commercial break before this segment, and I was asking you about your ski gear and winter gear. It turns out you're also having this Christmas in July sale uh, where people can take an additional 30% off. So you're doing this whole winter clearance as well. We are. It's, it's running right at the same time as uh, the sale you just mentioned, and it's all winter gear. So uh, clearance sale on, you know, equipment, jackets, boots, you name it, we've got it. Um, you know, spring break this year was impacted a little bit, you know, when uh, the whole COVID situation uh, came about. It was right on top of uh, spring break for a lot of people. So we do have some residual inventory, and we're looking to uh, pass it along to you guys at a really good deal. Yeah, taking a bad situation and turning it into some savings for the customers. Also, I mean, 40 years in business, you guys are really a fixture in this community. You are committed to helping Houstonians and help strengthen our communities. We do. You know, selling product is one thing. Uh, being in business this long, you, you really should be and you must be a good community partner. Uh, we've partnered with the MS-150 for over 20 years. We our team has raised uh, thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, you know, for fighting MS. Also, uh, each year we donate uh, over a hundred thousand. Well, so far over a hundred thousand dollars in uh, product to the Star of Hope uh, to help those folks out that are in need. And uh, we have a community commitment program where we, uh, you know, try to give back as much as we can with you know local school fundraisers, things like that. And then also we uh, donate to a lot of events, whether it's running, uh, cycling races, uh, ski events across the country. You know, we've got uh, 14 or 15 different markets that we're in. So cycling races may be one thing here, ski races may be something up in the Northeast area, but we try to have our hand in as much as we can and uh, try to give back and provide uh, as much as we can for the community. And that you do, Jimmy Boyle. Thanks so much for your work in the community and also for keeping us fit and active as well. <laughs> we'll see you at the sale. You bet, Derek. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Sounds good. And a reminder that these special offers are available in stores, also online at sunandski.com. All right, shifting gears now. Up next, celebrity hairstylist Joseph Maine is back with some easy looks anyone he promises can create at home. Perfect for a virtual Zoom call. Maybe that virtual happy hour. We'll be right back with that.
Well, so many of us are in this boat. Are you looking for some hair inspiration for your next Zoom call meeting? I just throw on a baseball cap and call it a day, but I know for some people it's not that easy. <laughs> yes. Joseph Maine is back with some styles that you can recreate at home in minutes. Joseph, welcome back to the show, and you are joined now by your lovely model and sister, Sabrina local Houstonians. It's great to see you both. <laughs> and let's just jump right in uh, with this first category, the Zoom calls. You know, I was joking about the baseball cap thing. For the Zoom calls, you know, if you're dealing with clients and business, you want to look professional. So where do we begin? I agree. I mean, I think some people seem to forget that, that their teammates can see them on camera and just tie their hair up. I think that there's a number of ways that you can make your hair look really good in just a couple of minutes. And the first way I'm going to show you is just by kind of focusing on the front of your hair when styling. This is a great trick, whether you're on a Zoom call or just in everyday life. You don't always have to worry about all of your hair. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So these wavy looks that I'm going to show you um, are also great if your haircut's a little grown out. Um, you don't want to, if your hair gets grown out, you don't want to focus on a really slick straight look or a really blown out look. A wavy look is going to kind of mask the fact that your hair gets grown out. And so this waiver I'm using is called Babe Waves by Trademark Beauty. And it's so simple to use. You just clamp sections and it gives you this perfect beach wave. But what you can see is I'm just focusing on this hair right around her face and kind of the ends. And it's going to look like her entire head is done in just a couple of minutes. Wow. I have never seen a tool like wow. it. I, like, I would assume that's a waffle iron if I found it in the drawer at your house, Joseph. <laughs> well, and look how wonderful her waves look. Joseph, do you recommend that tool to get the easy five-minute waves? Or do you have another, another tip or advice on how to get your hair look wavy in like just under five minutes? This is the tool to do that. It's way faster than curling your hair or wanding your hair. And it doesn't matter if you're good at doing hair or not, you can use this one. It's great for all lengths and it comes in three sizes. So if you have shorter hair, there's a smaller one for you. If you like a bit of a tighter wave as well, you'll be able to achieve it with the smaller one. And you get these really wow. perfect effortless waves it's like in a, just a few minutes. That is such a, a quick transition. Yeah, Sorry, well. what again is that device? <laughs> I want so one called, I don't even have long hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's called Babe Waves by Trademark Beauty. Babe waves. Okay. We can practice later with that. Babe I, waves. I, I love it. Okay, let's move on to uh, providing some volume then. We've covered the waves, right? I still can't believe how quick that was. That was like 20 was seconds, like right? Yeah, okay. That's amazing. What if people need a little more volume, right? If they're at home and they feel like the hair has just gotten so flat? So this is a really fun trick, and it's not something you want to wear out, but for a Zoom call for a FaceTime date, um, this is going to be a great trick. Or you guys on TV where someone can't see the back of your head, this is what we do on set. We take a clip like this, and you actually just pull all the hair forward and hide that clip <gasps> behind her hair, and it gives you really instant volume. You do this on both sides, and it'll make for a great voluminous selfie. What? We need to try that one later, too. I that feel like it's not going to look as good as that. What happens if you turn around, though, Joseph, and you're like, oh, sorry, my dog is barking. I need to turn around. <laughs> your clips are showing. Then <laughs> your secrets are out. So okay. don't turn around. If you've got this going on, you want to, at all costs, stay facing forward. Oh, gosh, looking <laughs> look forward. That. that looks amazing. It looks awesome. Okay, so speaking of accessories, we can call that clip an accessory. What, what are some ways to conceal roots with accessories? Because we, we need all the help we can get, Joseph. So I showed you some awesome ways to conceal your roots using products earlier, but sometimes you're in a pinch. They call you five minutes before and say, hop on Zoom. I'm going to tell you a headband can be your best friend. With your roots especially, you can just see the front in most cases. Even when you're out and about, most people can't see this portion of your head. And so using a good statement accessory right in front is going to look really chic and it's going to conceal those roots. Look at that. See, that is like the prime definition of working smarter, not harder. <laughs> exactly. I love and that. And you can achieve these same sort of looks by even making two braided pigtails and crossing them in the front and doing a bit of like a braided crown can give you the same sort of effect. Wow. Joseph, you make it look so easy. Seriously, dude. It's great to see you. Uh, <laughs> really once COVID you. is behind us, fingers crossed, knock on wood, that that happens sooner than later. Please come back and see us uh, and bring Sabrina along. Without a doubt. I'd love to. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And Sabrina, thank you, too. And we will be sharing Joseph's tips on our website. Be sure, by the way, to follow him on Instagram at Joseph Main for more styling secrets. And we will be right back with more Houston Life. Stick around. 
Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, this isn't your typical history class. Lauren Kelly hits the road with a local historian for a drive-by history lesson. So cool, we'll get the story behind the Rice downtown, the Kirby Mansion, and the Link Lee Mansion. Very nice. And in the meantime, Christine Noel, we have had so much fun having you today we on have. Houston Life. Do you ever Life. just like bang your head and go like this with your fist to the Houston Life music? Yeah. I just feel like I just want to like, you know, dance. We've got some some great music. And, you know, I think with our new 3 p.m. move, we're going to be television neighbors now. I know. Houston Life will be at 3 p.m., followed by the 4 o'clock news with you I and know. Keith. We're super excited about it. Buddies, they just know that we needed to be closer. And now they're delivering. I know. So we're really excited. But yeah, that's happening in August. I know, August 17th. So there's going to be, I don't know, some updates to the studio, maybe some new music. I don't know. We've got some surprises. I've been thinking all sleeves, about them, yes. right? Well, in the meantime, uh, I think a lot of people were very impressed by the dance move that Jesse taught you. And we, we didn't really know what it meant. I sort of thought it was like hand model, palm olive. I think the fingers need to be closed a little more. You're a better hand model than I am. But one of our viewers, Katina, sent us a tweet letting us know that, Christine, your dance move was called the prep. prep. Oh, yeah. Like prepping for surgery. So then if you're putting on the gloves and... Yeah, like you're scrubbing in. And Katina works for UT Physicians. I love it. So Katina, thank you for thank letting you. us know. It, that will forever be called the prep now. I, know. I still think, like, it, it is very... I, maybe hand model is more like this. You know on The Price is Right when they used to be like, and this box of, box of mac, and, mac and cheese, and they would, like, tap their finger... Oh, I used to definitely. practice that as a kid. I was like, how do they do that? It's so smooth. Mm. I love how you were like pursing your lips when you're doing that. I'm trying to be, you know, like Diane Parkinson, the <laughs> like Price the is Right model. And the hands. Christina Well, we love you so Thank much. Thank you. Come back Thank and you see guys us for soon. having me. See you tomorrow.